So let's say that you've got some data in Google Docs and you want to create a scatter plot because you're looking for maybe the best fit line, um, a linear regression, a regression analysis, so lots of different vocabulary words. Um, but what we're looking for um, and wanting Google Sheets to do for us is to see if we've got a linear relationship between the text sent in 24 hours and the text received in 24 hours. So I had my class just fill out this survey with lots of information and this is the data that they gave me. Um, so as I go through here, the first thing I want to do is to make sure that all of my data is numerical and I've got one student who put 100 or more. So if I leave it like this, when I go ahead and do the scatter plot or ask Google Docs or I mean Google Sheets for the best fit line, it's just going to ignore this data point and compared to the others it's pretty important. So I'm going to go ahead and take 100 or more and just change it to 100. The other thing you could do, just based on your data and your own analysis of it, you could also leave it out. So if I want to create a scatter plot, that's the first thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and just um, click and scroll so that I've got this data highlighted. So I've got my data highlighted. I'm going to go up here to the menu and choose insert, and I want to insert a chart. Google Sheet does a really nice job of guessing what chart that you wanted, and I do want a scatter chart. So over here in the chart editor, which automatically popped up, I can change that chart type, but it recognized that I chose um, two uh, sets of data that were related. So I do want to leave this as a scatter plot. So I've got my information here, but what I really want is that line. In order to get the best fit line, I just want to click on any of these data values. So if I click on a data value, the chart, edit, the chart editor changes just a little bit. And if I go ahead and scroll down here, so if I scroll down, it's going to give me some other options. So it asks me if I want a trend line. That's what we're looking for. So that's what it calls the best fit line. Um, the linear regression, the linear correlation, it calls the equation of that line the trend line. So I'm going to go ahead and click on trend line. Um, I am looking for a linear type. You could do other types of regressions here, but ours does look linear, so I'm going to leave it on linear. You can change some of the formatting, but what I really want to do is to get the equation out of this. So if I scroll down a little bit more, it can give me the R squared value. Um, this is the correlation coefficient. If it's close to 1, it tells me that I've got a really strong positive correlation. If it's close to negative 1, I've got a strong negative correlation. If I click the R squared value, it gives it to me right here. And 0.974 um, does seem like it's very close to 1 for a nice positive linear correlation. You could do a statistical test to confirm that. Um, I also want the equation itself. So I'm going to scroll up here, and this is my labeling. So the type of label I want, let's see. Um, so chart style, format the data points, I think it's right here, nope, not that one. Data label, type linear, we did that one. Label, oh, here it is. Okay, so right next to that R squared value, it says what do you want to label this? And I really want the equation as the label. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Use Equation. And now it's given me this equation. So the equation relating my x values, which are the texts sent, and my y values, which are the texts received, is this equation right here. So y equals 0.973x plus 0.14. If I minimize this just a little bit and get myself to a white screen here, I can go ahead and plot this or write this equation so that you know exactly what you'd be looking for. Okay, so can I see it there if I scroll down just a little bit more? Okay, so here it is. I can just barely see it there. So the equation that I'm getting here is this one. So y is equal to Let's make this smaller so we can see it. It was that 0.9, where was it? So y is equal to 0.973. So 0.973, um, 0.973x plus 0.1454. Uh, 
with an R squared value of, uh, that was 0.9 something, what was that? It was a good one, right? 0.974 with an R squared value of 0.974. Okay, I did that a little bit messy, so let me rewrite that just one more time. But I also want to emphasize what the variables are. So let's just call this 0.97x plus, I'm just going to drop that third decimal place and call that 0.15. This is an equation that relates the y values along that y axis. So if I go back to my graph here and make it big, along the y axis we had the texts received x-axis were the texts sent. So y-axis were the texts received. So the number of texts received is equal to 0.97 times the number sent plus 0.1, whoops, 0.15. So I've got my linear, um, my linear correlation. It looks like it's a pretty good one with that 0.94. I have the equation of the best fit line, and you've got that equation both just in variable terms, but then also in terms of what our data is. Um, be sure and subscribe. Also, take a look at my other videos. I'm going to show you how to work this in Excel, and then I'm also going to rework this with the TI-84. So be, be sure and take a look at those videos as well.